Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map we're going to be exploring is GM Disrepair. Oh! Good timing, random explosion! Uh, this is another map from Didascus, who those of you who have been watching this channel for a while will surely be familiar with. The creator of a number of maps that I've played on here, including the OG GM Liminal Space. And as you can see, that inventive mind, creator of all these dreamlike spaces, is in full play here. Listen to that, it's like... voices or industrial noises being carried on the wind. But you can't quite pin down what any of it is, or where it would even be coming from in a space like this. Didaska's soundscapes, in my experience, have this quality to them, where they sort of play in the background and rise to a peak, and then slope back down, and they do so in a way where you tend to notice them at a particular point, and only then even become aware that you've been hearing it for quite some time. Yep, we'll definitely have to make an expedition down there. Oh, that is so weird to look at. Anytime I see a floor texture wrap over the side and continue vertically like that, it gives me the impression that if I were to walk forward, my legs would cling to the walls and I'd be able to walk down them like any other hallway. And maybe I've been playing too much Outer Wilds recently. Now this is interesting to look at because I see this pit, and with these pillars jutting out, it forms a spiral staircase almost, giving the impression that you're meant to traverse down here. Although from the look of it, it would be a one-way trip. But over there, we've got the impressions of broken ladders, or... I say broken, that one's just sticking backwards out of the wall. It's almost like this world had, like, an incomplete intelligence for how to go about doing this, and it tried multiple methods before it settled on something that would work. Like, look, you've got these lights in the walls at irregular places, and then you had these much more consistent ones sitting on those pillars. Again, like it tried multiple methods for lighting this. There's a lot of different ways I could go here. Look, okay, I'm almost getting the impression of like an AI-generated world here. Because that thing scares me every time I turn around. It looks like a black silhouette. But look, you've got these wooden pillars holding up beams. But down here we have what looks like it could be collapsed versions of that. But they're more like actual tree branches. Something that's at a glance the same, but completely different to someone who knows what either of those things actually are. It's interesting to look at AI-generated art and try to understand what it is it thinks it sees in a totally nonsensical image. Oh, look at those huge destroyed structures up in the clouds. Alright, but enough of that. I spent enough time in this room. We're not going to learn any more until we start pressing forward. Ow. Uh, ooh. That's a little bit of a difficult angle. Uh, uh, uh. Ladder? What was I just clinging on to? It was... That actually threatens to kill me. Oh, I can actually... Oh, no, 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 stop, stop doing, stop doing, stop doing what you're doing, stop doing what you're doing! Okay, we're not going to be using those ladders. And continuing this way is no good either, from the look of it. So even though they aren't visually drawn, there are ladders there. Alright, let's try and land on this thing, uh, minimize our damage. I don't think there's any way for us to get back. Well, there are ladders right there, but... No, there's... there's nothing down there. 
I think this has been a fool's errand. I don't think there's any way to actually get down there. And if I were to get there, I doubt there's anything besides a kill trigger. Let's climb back up. Uh, you know, listening to that soundtrack again... <laughs> this is the first time I've really tuned into it since I talked about it a few minutes ago. But it's weird. Even if you're not actively listening to it, it does change your mood as you go. Getting this foreboding sense where before I was so curious to see what's at the bottom. It started to feel more and more like I was just burying myself. And I realized I can actually attribute that to the change in ambiance. Right, this ain't gonna be easy to do in VR. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, and I'm dead. Wait, but... I respawned up here? Is that something that's meant to happen? Um... We... Ow. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. So, oh, we can climb up this as well. I did read on the workshop page that we could learn uh, th that we could learn backstory on this map through various newspapers that are scattered around. Now, in my experience in VR, this most likely will not be readable, but maybe I'll come back later to all the ones that I find during this playthrough and read them for myself in regular mode. Okay, that's something we'll worry about later. In the meantime. That little cutout with the red glow has certainly captured my curiosity. Ooh, Polybius. Where am I? Oh, am I underwater? Wait, what is this place? I... Haha, <laughs> -ha, clever, it acts as a portal. But wait, these walls almost have, like, PS1-style textures and blockiness to them. Am I to understand I've been transported into a game itself? This is where I came through. Oh. Oh. You know, the sound of a ghost train on the wind is creepy, but once I heard that horn, I was actually kind of relieved because for a second I was thinking that there might be something in the water here with me. Uh, maybe I didn't teleport at all. Maybe I fell through, like, some kind of invisible floor. Or no-clip floor, rather. Is there going to be some way for me to get out of here? Uh, if you don't know what Polybius is and the significance of that, I highly recommend looking it up. It's one of my favorite urban legends ever. Thing is, I actually have no idea if it actually dates back to the 80s when such a thing would have been in use, or if it's a more modern internet creepypasta that's sold as something that was talked about then. It's kind of obscured in that way. Not that it's obscured, I haven't really looked into it. Uh... Okay, bobbing for easter eggs, that's how we're gonna find a way out. The only thing I can think of is that is quite a... conspicuous blue glow on that surface over there. Oh, imagine just walking up to an arcade machine one day and... finding yourself, next thing you know, in here. Not having any idea how you got here and with no idea how to get out. I wonder how many have come before me. Yes, there we are. Okay, if we're continuing with the arcade machine that teleports you idea, imagine this. Imagine having that happen to you in the 80s and then just reappearing at some random Eastern European apartment block in the 2020s. Exactly as you were when you left.
See, that's something that fascinates me in Unsolved Mysteries even more than disappearances. Disappearances with a later, just as unexplained, reappearance. Oh, this looks a lot like the outsides of uh, GM Post USSR. No one here, but there's destruction and fires, almost apocalyptic imagery. I wonder if this all physically connects, or if it's like different worlds that you teleport between. Uh, oh no, it's gonna be giving me this bug. Hang on, I'm gonna restart the game to see if I can fix it. That worked on, uh, that worked on GM Fork. Yeah, still not working, sorry. This is like a random bug that happens. There's nothing I can do about it. Every once in a while, doors will just work if I reload, but I've tried it three times and it's just not happening. Oh, listen to that thunder overhead, the random sounds. Hang on, uh, if we can climb this, maybe we can get a taller view? No. Oh, the way the sunlight catches those boxes on top of the buildings, it almost looks like a crown. Like there's been a hectic night of riots and who knows what else. And now dawn is finally breaking and there's no one left to appreciate it. The fires are still burning, but it must be recent because so are the streetlights. That orange glow only accentuated by them. The vibe that I'm getting from this is not one actually of being transported to some random place, but of being transported to like a destroyed version of my own hometown. I mean, it's strange the sense of loss that I for some reason get from this image. And oddly enough, I swear I just heard a bird chirp in the middle of all this. What is that over there? Is that something we can open? Oops. Also, why is my flashlight not working? Come on. Man, that red glow in the sky. <laughs> Stop doing that map. I don't know if that's going to happen all the time or if it's just because I reloaded. Uh, just look at the silhouette of those bent trees against an apocalyptic red sky. No one here, but the destruction leading you to believe that you've only just missed some major event. The ambiance of this is giving me... I mean, this is going to be another one of those things that's just intuitive and not something I can actually qualify. But this is giving me Ghost of Christmas Future vibes. The kind of nightmare that you'd have and... Afterwards, feel like it was some kind of warning, like this is your future if you make some mistake that you know you're going to make. Uh, let's start exploring some of these apartments. If I can find the doorknob, because remember, the game still sees these doors as being there, I just can't see them. For some reason, it felt safer on the street. Maybe we can learn from that newspaper as well. Somehow it's even worse seeing all that out the window. If we continue upwards... Uh, man, these landings are really, really weird looking. And these apartments are all different. This one looks to be vacant. Can't find the doorknob, though. Ooh. An open-air balcony. From here, those streetlights look a lot more evil than comfy. Almost like they're the bent eye stalks of some insect or crab creature that's taken over this place. I'm not doing myself any favors in this situation, am I? I still don't know how to get out of here and back to where we were before. Don't suppose we can secure a ride? Nope. Uh, 
Wait, what's that over there? I'm getting a real sense of panic that something's about to happen. Oh no. Oh, that's just what we need. A low ceiling, low light parking garage. I appreciate the lights, but somehow they don't make it any better. Oh! I have now respawned, and... I have no idea where I am. Now, typically in a situation like this, I would noclip and try to find back where I was. But I feel that if we're going to treat this as a dream, we should treat this as an abrupt transition in one. The Blue Oyster. Whoa, wait, wait. Both that writing and that name seem very, very familiar to me. But I'm not sure where I've heard it before. What are these buttons? The Blue Oyster Music, El Huervo Rest, and Disable Music. Well, I'm glad to have the option to disable music because I have a feeling these are very copyrighted. There were a list of four licensed songs that were used, and I believe one or two of them were uh, from games, so those should be fine, but this? Maybe not. I'm just shut off the music. And now replaced by this incredibly foreboding soundscape. <sighs> because I feel like if I leave it where I did, that maybe we can skirt by on the content ID side of things. This is one of those places where I really wish I could just sit down and play the whole song for you guys. It was the kind of thing where you can just imagine yourself sliding into the booth and putting your face down in your arms on the table. Or if it's a really chill crowd, even just laying across the bench itself. I've always loved exploring bars in Gary's Mod, and this one having a song like that, the kind that really knows that you're here to rest at the end of a long day, that's something. Now I can go left or right, but maybe I go upstairs first? I usually try to take things one floor at a time, but you never know where you'll end up in a map like this. Uh, we can't seem to open these stall doors. Same thing over here? No. Huh. All at once, it's like stepping into a warehouse? and a dark alleyway outside of your favorite bar. <laughs> oh, that's concrete rebar and all that. For a second, I almost thought it was like arms and legs dangling down in the dark. Uh, yeah, wow, it's like this parking garage. Wait. There's another one. It's almost like Polybius is responsible for everything that's happening here. Okay, uh, where do we go? Where do we go? Yeah, this all wraps around this. Oh! Oh, I actually wasn't transported very far at all! Because back here, first of all, there's that Islamic State payphone. But... <laughs> hated that noise. Uh, yeah, this goes back to here. Meaning that if we go through here... Oh, now I'm turned around. I'm not sure where exactly I am. 
I'm in amongst the pipes now. Like I've managed to wedge myself into the wall and... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, it's Snoop Dogg. Okay, okay, run away from that, run away from that. Ah, never mind, Polybius isn't behind this, it's Content ID. Content ID has finally tracked me down. I don't know how, but it found me. Oh wow, none of this is as far away as I thought. This whole time, I've been moving around, and each time I ended up somewhere different, I felt like I might as well be on the surface of the moon. But when you can't see where you come from and where you've been, you have no idea just how close you really are. Okay, well look, that's good news. That means that we have a good base, we're starting to get an idea of how all this connects. Which means, if we want to see something again, we can always find our way back. Which means we don't have to be as afraid to take different paths. Oh, look at this. It's got that movie theater wall texture. That carpeting that they put up on it. Oh. It actually is a movie theater. What am I even seeing here? Oh, it's so destroyed. Very, very deteriorated and pixelated. The only thing I can make out is two black bulbs on top of something's head. Maybe it's an old Mickey Mouse cartoon? Uh, music from the 30s and 40s is creepy enough as is, but... Playing on a flickering screen in this otherwise dark room to an audience of none? Audience of none, but presence certainly felt indeed. For some reason, this makes me feel like something bad is going to happen any moment now. That some decayed face will appear on the screen and start screaming. In a nightmare like this, it's the kind of thing, and I do notice the nose paper down there, where you just know what's going to happen before it happens. Uh. Oh, this does open. Okay, oh. And it just goes right back into the mall. Okay, glad to be out of there. That singing almost felt like it was coming from above or behind me. Alright, where do we go from here? Rows of office desks. That's an image that appeared on GM Liminal Space as well. In fact, this whole area is sort of reminding me of that. Like the business center or train station area. Weird how certain images stick with you. This almost feels like it would function as like a criminal hideout or something. Who knows what kind of contraband is in these crates. And this music is making it seem like I'm getting close to something. You know, it's really interesting because I always talk about dream logic and how it can abruptly transition you from one thought to the next, basically based on some vague connection between one and the next. Here, it's as oh, this is oh my god. Oh Jesus, I did not expect to see people. When have I ever seen people on one of these maps? Also, I don't like the one hiding behind the pillar. Put on your gay face. We are going to ocean. You hear me pitch poop off digit from square root of two for the fifth folk. 
I am so gay. Blue Oyster Bar. Time. Goodbye, bitch. Come back, you bitch, or I will Goodbye. shoot. Ha 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 ha. I'm not sure I've ever been more confused in my life. Oh, and it brings me back here. Back to the Snoop Dogg corner. Okay. Tell you what, I really don't appreciate being played with like that. Hey, look at that. I miraculously respawned and I'm still alive and you're still dead. Oh, there's your friend. Well, anyway, I have no idea how to respond to what I just saw. It's really jarring how much humor there is on a map that makes me feel this way. I think a lot of the work here is the soundtracks telling me how I feel, and that's not a criticism. Of course soundtrack can enhance a scene, but it can also make it. It can literally insert emotion into something that wasn't there before, and so much like a dream, Soundtrack can basically insert an intuitive idea that you wouldn't have just based on visuals alone. And to get back to what I was saying, it's really interesting how, in dreams, ideas change abruptly based on some loose connection with the previous idea. Here, we kind of have the framing of a mall, and I guess people kind of have the idea in their head, a mall has everything. A mall has stores, a mall has games, a mall has a movie theater. Why can't it also have one room that's basically like a criminal hideout? Or anything else you can think of. I think back this way was towards the bar, yes. Which I've sort of come to consider almost a home base. For a couple of reasons. It's not just the comfy music and the nice dim ambiance. It's the fact that it's at the end of a hall, nothing behind it. And so, in that way, it sort of is a safety hole, don't you think? It scratches the urge in a dangerous and intimidating situation to wedge yourself into a corner where you won't be seen. That's the vibe this place has, and I think, you know what? Since a lot of bars have that feeling, I gotta wonder if they don't do it intentionally. We end up right back where we started. Oh my, there's so much more to this. Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, so this goes back out onto the town. So we don't need to go all the way there. What are you? The end of the parking garage, I bet. This is what happens if you were to follow this all the way down. Uh, it's always insane to me how a map like this can seem so much bigger than it is by having areas that wrap around each other. It seems like the parking garage practically goes around the entire map. There's all kinds of things within it and all kinds of things wrapping around those things within those things. Getting a lot of bang for your buck out of the space. Alright, what happens if I do it? Uh. Uh. Um, have I glitched out of the map? Do I still have an opportunity to swim for it? I think I'm in water. I'm partially in water. <laughs> is this what falling into the back rooms feels like? Maybe there will be another teleport? No, I think I might have really broken myself here. I have no idea what I've done. I'm just kind of walking along the edge of what's probably supposed to not be accessible. I'll tell you something weird though. Now that I'm looking for it, I'm able to see that if we look up into the sky, we can't see those giant towering structures. Those things that are so huge and scaled up that there's no way humans could have built them, but we do see them if we come over here. And so in that way, almost fell in the pit. 
Uh, in that way, it's really cool because it messes with your perspective, your sense of time and scale. I mean, I think I talked about this on places you've seen in your dreams. If you walk by a whole bunch of windows, and sometimes it's day and sometimes it's night, it makes you feel disoriented. It makes you feel like you've been in here for so much longer than you have been. And by changing the backgrounds, you can make it feel like you've traveled so much farther than you have. Ooh. Take destruction and place it behind glass like this, it almost makes it seem planned. Like it's all part of some kind of museum exhibit. Whoa. I see that vent over there. Oh, that is so cool. It all goes down into these lakes. There's this recurring image of waterways and pipes. Oops. Uh, can we get over there? There's another newspaper up there. Ah, here we are. And another one of these invisible ladders. Man, that is such a cool idea, being able to climb these invisible ladders. Because it adds another avenue for you to hide things where it's not just dependent on you seeing a ladder, it's dependent on you seeing the endpoint. You don't just see a path to somewhere and decide to explore it. You have to see where you want to go, and then check if it has the means for you to actually access it. Now, let's try this. Come on. There's got to be some way to get up here. I can see when jumping up that it curves around to the right, which means it goes back to the starting area. It has to. Yeah, right here, but I'm still not going to be able to get in from here. Tell you what, I think we are just going to have to traverse this thing in no clip. So let's just ready ourselves into the crouch position because I am not leaving without seeing where that goes. Okay, we've got a breakable right here and a breakable right here. So let's do this correctly and break that breakable. What are you? Oh. A wireframe box where we can just view the destruction around us. Or is it even destruction? In a scenario like this, it almost looks like something that just is, not something that was meant to be one way and is now another. Also, don't think I don't see whatever that is up there. Okay, more adventures in Noclip. There's probably right ways to do all this, but I have no idea how you'd access it. Oh, I see. Okay, the way to access this would be to die like I did before. No, 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 wait, not die. Because I didn't die. I didn't die and respawn. I know what this is. Okay. Wow, we're really thinking outside the box here. We're actually including being outside the map as part of the map. That explains so much of what we've seen so far. Uh, can we walk along this edge to see this? No, that looked really interesting over there. Okay, uh, we can destroy this, right? No wonder, okay. We basically worked backwards, but we do know now how to do this. Uh, so, okay, if you'll let me in, please. I don't know how much lower I can crouch. Okay, I had to jump up a little bit. Knock you down. Knock you down, as well as you. That gets us to here, which gets us to here. I don't know what my arm is doing right there. I think that's a tracking issue. I'm probably close to a wall or something. But I can't turn my flashlight while it's happening. 
And that gets us out to here. We were never meant to climb in. Alright, there we are. I guess I can see my arm again. Is there perhaps anything off to the sides that I may have missed? Uh, this is probably going to be a dead end. Uh, no? No, no, no. Oh, no. You're going to make me climb that? Oh, this whole thing really does feel like Chuck E. Cheese. Oh. Oop. I'll spare you the headache of watching me do this whole thing. Oh, wait. I think we're already at the top. Never mind. I will not spare you the headache of watching me do this whole thing. Oh, never mind. We didn't finish it, we just reached the advanced difficulty course. Okay. Ugh. This map clearly not made with VR in mind. Yep. Nope. Yep. And yes, I do have to make a noise every single time. Have you ever played Crash Bandicoot? Yep. Wait, how am I even supposed to do this? Yep. Yep. And, come on. And our prize is newspaper. We never did see what was up here. Let me crouch through and get to that ladder. Yep. Huh. You know, this ain't a bad hidey hole either. If you wanted to. Some really nice looking couches, drink machines, a computer. Or was there a computer? No, that was a microwave. Well, my point still stands. And you can look down and see what's coming by. Only one point to defend? Yeah. Okay, didn't understand a word of that. Much like the other text-to-speech on this map. You know what? Bring Snoop Dogg back in. I like him better. Maybe this one will transport us to a different place? Uh, it's different, but the same. Those PS1 graphics, but... Now there's something else to it. That looks like a teleport if I've ever seen one, so let's continue to explore around just a little bit. Ah, uh, we can get out there. Okay, so maybe we can get in here with no problem. Why do I feel like there's spectators outside these windows? What just loaded? Freedom! Not quite. All of those games bring you right back here to the same spot. Alright, what happens if we climb down here? Oh, there is actually something. A discarded briefcase? Another newspaper? Ooh, a weird effect going on where objects in water are farther than they appear. Uh, something told me there'd be one more of you. And this time we can see the exit straight away. Hmm. It's almost like it's a monument to monuments. Statues surrounded in a grove of trees. I do have to wonder why the machines take me to these places in particular, but maybe I'm not meant to question it. Maybe I'm just meant to float through. And as usual, it brings me back here. There was like a weird whistling and footsteps on the ambiance. 
I've been walking around for quite a while now. I just checked my record time and it's about to hit 90 minutes. <laughs> and this kind of thing is really difficult because so much of these secrets are dependent on teleports, which means I would basically have to walk over every inch of the map in order to know if I found anything. So I, it's like, it's one of those how do I know when it's over moments. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna start my noclip run now, but it's in a weird structure where it's not necessarily the end of the video. I can't wait to see how all this wraps around itself and connects. Come on, no, how far back do we have to pull to be able to see the entire thing? There we are. Oh, that's so cool. So, the city wraps around this outer edge. It's almost like stripes on a rainbow. Then within that, you have the parking garage that wraps around that. Then the pipes that wrap around that, and then the mall in the middle. There is sort of a structure to it, and... Hello. I did not notice that pit in the movie theater before. You were hiding a dark secret. Out of my way. Out of my way, all of you. Hmm. It's not one of those no collide floors. Well, what happens if we were to do uh, one of these? Yep, that sound doesn't lie. Well, we've come this far. Oh no. Hey! Hey, guess what? This isn't a... This room isn't a square? I don't know what that means. You know, unlike previous maps by this creator, this one is just determined to mock my attempts to find horror in this. Okay, I'm starting to think one way of finding these easter eggs might be to look at the ladders, because there's one right there. It seems to want some platforming to be done here. So what if we... Come on. Oh, this is going to be so hard. Why did you have to place it behind a light like this? That makes this almost impossible. Alright, tell you what. No clip. What do you want me to see? Oh, I bet it's whatever's up there. But nothing to be done with it. Oh no, 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 no. You're very conspicuously different looking. But not in a racist way, like a like a texture way. Come on, why are you wood? Well, there doesn't seem to be anything underneath it, nor does this lead anywhere. However... Oh, this is something I could access from here. Okay, this isn't even an easter egg. This is just what the map is at this point. You know, I really don't like a long hallway with bare walls. Makes me feel like doors used to be here and were covered up. Or that it's like an apartment building for beings that don't require the use of doors. I'll just walk over the blackness. NBD. Over the no-draw texture, no problem. down the absurdly scaled hall that makes me feel like a mouse in a trap. Slightly more of a big deal. This is actually... Okay. Okay, why is this so panic-inducing? I'm not sure why. I haven't really felt exactly this before. 
Will there be a teleport at the end for me? No. 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 Well, now I don't want to move. You know what's weird? It's kind of like those apartment buildings all seem so huge compared to what we can actually see inside. I think I just unlocked a new fear. Hang on, let's go outside. Uh, oops, sorry, let's go to where the apartments actually are. Here's a fear of seeing huge structures that instead of having lots of small rooms inside, are actually just facades for these huge cavernous spaces. That's a thought that freaks me out. Well, 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 look who it is. Well, tell you what, I've been trying to experience this map the proper way, but we are on our no-clip run, which means the gloves are off now. Yep. Yep. Yeah, how's it feel? That was nice thinking, Martha. Ah, oh, good job taking cover. Not sure how much use these would be against grenades, but I guess it was all the protection you needed. Certainly did you better than your compatriots. Now that's a spooky little space. What is this? Again, I'm sorry for not finding the actual way to get here, but I do want to see as much as possible. There's something about such a bland, almost office-looking place with darkened windows. You literally can't see beyond the panes of glass. And it triggers a deep spookiness in me. This is the kind of space that makes me feel, in the glow of that exit sign, like I'm approaching the end of something. There's nothing else here. Nothing except this bench. That is so weird. This is just floating out there in the void. No idea how you're meant to get there or how you're meant to leave. This really is the back rooms. Imagine when you glitch out of reality instead of ending up in a large maze-like space, instead ending up in a sort of small, very limited one. I'm honestly not sure which would be worse. I guess we see what happens when we try to leave this way. Another one of those briefcases. Wait. Ah, uh, yeah, ooh, yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, so we're learning something. Those briefcases mean something. We can interact with them. Okay, major breakthrough. I often find when I do the no-clip runs, I end up working backwards. Oh, look. And it's like being in the back of GM Post USSR. Can we use that ladder to climb this thing? No. And this also brings us straight back to this grove. Okay, wait. I have an idea. We found one of those briefcases in the water right here, so... Ah, yes. That's how we get here. Okay, I had my suspicions, but there we are. Hello again, place of comfort in an otherwise confusing and intimidating world. So that was GM Disrepair. And it's weird, it manages to maintain a unique identity, while still visually being very much Didascus. It's got that same sort of otherworldly vibe as GM Liminal Space, a lot of the imagery of maps like post-USSR, while at the same time having, kind of uniquely, a real sense of humor that permeates every aspect of it. It has you on the hunt for all these Easter eggs, which by the way, it seems like more of this map takes place off-map off than in it, and it's kind of cool in that way. A lot of them are legitimately weird and unnerving places, while others... I don't know, others seem to almost mock you for taking this so seriously. I would say, though, that it's closer to the RP aneurysm variant of GM Liminal Space 
bin liminal space itself. And it's because it's got, even in spite of its humor, a much darker tone with its areas. Or at least that's the feeling that I get walking through there. Maybe, well, maybe it's just that excellent ambient track doing all the work. It's got that thing where it seems like things are just coming apart. When it shows you that image of huge collapsed structures taking up the entirety of the sky, that apocalyptic red hue of the city streets, it makes you feel like something is wrong. It's not like GM, GM Liminal Space where it's got more of that backrooms neutral vibe. This is much more foreboding. Which is why it's really funny that they've chosen to contrast it with all that humor that's here. I don't know, maybe it's... Maybe it's like I said before, how I started to look at these buildings not as destruction, but as something that just is, that's not meant to be any other way. And so maybe that's what the humor is meant to say, that maybe, even in spite of my own preconceptions about what these images mean, it just is. It's just a thing, and that my feelings are my own. Yep, that's me, English teaching Snoop Dogg in the corner. Well, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you want to download this map yourself, that link will be in the description. Hang on, I just said part of the description out of order, and now it's completely caused my brain to short circuit. Uh, what are some other things I say? Um, oh yeah, the Discord! Join the Discord! That link will also be in the description. Uh, oh, and, oh, and I will see you in the next one. That's another thing that I say. I can't believe how much that threw me out of whack. Oh, this has been a really weird one, even by liminal space standards. Oh, man. I think I'm going to stay here a while. I went back afterwards to try and find and read some of the newspapers. Some of them seemed to be displaying incorrectly, but for the most part they worked. Some had behind-the-scenes insight, some were meta, some were humorous, and some were just kind of weird and cryptic. I also happened to find another secret that I missed while I was at it.